Okay, so here we are with you. You, you are Rev, yep. my friend, who is also an artist. And uh, yeah, we met, I don't know, a year ago or so. Mm -hmm. In March, I think. Oh my God, you still remember to that point. I, I cannot even recall how we met, but anyway. <laughs> So we are both part of uh, the art community, the online art community, and uh, we are both doing art kind of for a living and also learning art, learning self-learning art. But I am a 100% self-learning artist, but you are, you went to an art school. Yes. And... Uh, yeah, we just thought we will have this forever debate about should an artist go to an art school or just do self-learning? Is it enough? Is it worth the same amount of learning than going to art school? You know, having the same skill set and the same quality of work if you do self-learning or you really have to go to an art school. And if you have to go to an art school or you want to go to an art school, how to pick your art school and such things. And ever since you also have experiences with art school, how it went, did you learn mm -hmm. usefulness or useful or something like that? Then we can also talk about that. So I think first things first, it is easier if we just kind of define what self-learning is because I be reading some debate about what is truly self-learning because some artists consider you know buying courses or courses neither of us English speaker just natives I mean it's just like so some weird pronunciation will happen so that's life so buying courses will is considered a self-learning or that is some form of some kind of teaching already so yeah is you you have to do everything on your own or you are free to buy courses <laughs> uh, okay so what is considered a sort of self-learning um personally i think um uh, buying courses is uh, also considered as self-learning because um, I don't think you can truly um, self-learn without um, help from the, from your surround oh sorry from your surroundings like hold on I don't know what, to, what I want to say in English. <laughs> Yeah, I, I kind of had an idea, but because I am thinking the same, like even though you have, you buy a, a, an art course, you still have to do things yourself. And it's mm -hmm. not a bad thing to have a guidance because if you, if you just, you know, sit down and look around your room and I just randomly start to draw and you have no idea how to start or what to practice even, and you don't get tips from someone, even though you are not talking face to face with, with that someone, it will be a pretty long and pretty difficult road to take. And why would anyone would try to figure out something that is already being figured out? Exactly, I mean, we all in all our, uh, steps of the learning ladder, we <laughs> require some help from the outside, from our friends, from internet, from these courses. And it's not a bad thing to do so, and it doesn't mean you aren't self-learning. And I, I, I think it's a very good idea to invest in these courses and courses. Why do I keep saying courses? <laughs> Well, I'm gonna Google how to pronounce it. <laughs> yeah, you don't have to. It is just like people just want, want you know. Horses. Horses? Horses? Course. Ho Maybe horses. Horses. I don't know. We have, have to invite Leo. She is the British one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's it just like, yeah, I just, yeah. When, I, when I read yeah. this idea of you are, you cannot call yourself self learner if you are not truly self-learning on your own so buying courses is just like you know cheating or something it's it just like totally that mindset when using references is cheating it's just like what the hell it's just not so yeah it just 
these courses give you guidance, but you still have to work on your own because when you go on our school, I, well, I didn't go to a proper art school. I went for a very short period of time to, I don't know how to call it. It was like art lessons, but for adults, and not just for adults, it, people, students came, you know, when, who wanted to go to the art university because, you know, the entry exam and drawing and portfolio thing, they needed help to it. But I went to a proper artist to draw from life and have tips and tricks and such things. So yeah, we can consider that like a semi art school thing. It, I went for six months, so it was, wasn't like a super long time. I also attended this uh, kind of, I, I don't know how to call it. I would call it a course, but in real life. Yeah, it was uh, a yeah. life course, like twice a week. So it's like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it, it wasn't like, you know, going every day to an art school and have projects and homework and such things. It was just mm -hmm. a session, four hours long, and you had to draw. Yeah, yeah. And you got and it's a live feedback. Right. Yeah, it's like um, this, uh, I actually don't know how it's called, but you are in a high school and for example, and after uh, the school is done, you go to these activities and it was something like that. Yeah, and I don't know how it's called. Or yeah, hobby works. club, something like yes, that. It's, it's, it happens in, you know, it's just like groups, mm -hmm. student groups, things, these things, you know, it's just like extra things. But what our school gives or this kind of sessions gives you is basically that you have an artist who is actually, you know, experienced and uh, can give you feedback. And he has, you know, I don't know, my, my artist had like more than 30 years of artist experience and uh, skill set behind him. And, you know, when, when, when such teacher looks at your study drawing, he can pinpoint what you are doing wrong and how you can improve that and even can show you so he sitting down at your place and he actually overdraws your piece and yeah this is a huge help mm -hmm. this is a big shortcut of course and when you are not going to an art school you have to do this all by yourself and even though if you are buying an art course there is no one who is basically standing behind your back and pinpoints out that you are doing this wrong, you should use more values, this is how you can do this, this is how you can do that. So you still have to put a lot of work by yourself. Uh -huh. and, and yeah, you, you have to figure out a lot of things when you are self-learning. And that definitely requires, I think it requires some, some skills. Yeah. To you you have to be able to understand what is said to you, what is shown to you, and you know. Yeah, and you have to be able to judge your own work without mm -hmm. going into straightforward depression and self-hatred, but also see what you did wrong and not like judging yourself like you are the best thing ever since sliced mm -hmm. bread happened. And, uh, but you also have to be kind to yourself. Like, yes, I did that wrong, but I know what I did wrong and I know how I can improve that. And next time I will improve that. And probably you won't improve that next time because I swear to God, I made the mistakes on my own for a hundred time. And I needed that hundred time to even realize why I am why I was drawing that I am currently doing this mistake like a hundred and one time and I could stop myself from doing that mistakes but I needed to repeat that mistakes a lot of times to even to to be able to even to realize yeah realize that you're doing that mistake <laughs> and yeah usually people I think I think because I didn't go to an art school but you did and um, I don't know. I, I personally, I think usually people go to art school because you know they just don't want to run in circles for years. You know what my reason was? What was what was your reason? <laughs> so I actually um, studied um, animation high school, 
it was like an art school, but with the spe specialized uh, specialized specialization. Yeah, specialization for animation. So when I was picking my high school, and um, I was maybe thirteen years old at the time, fourteen. Mm -hmm. And what was trending at the time was animation memes on YouTube. <laughs> and I really wanted to make animation memes. So I told myself, you know what, it would be a really good idea if I went to animation high school to learn animating. And it was a complete catastrophe because, um, you know, I am a younger year and uh, uh, I was... Um, it was around COVID when I entered the second year of uh, that school and so we had to stay home and that second year was very important for uh, because we, we knew the basics like how to animate a bouncing ball and all that but um, we needed to know to know more you know like uh, a bouncing ball won't lead you through the whole animation process and so at the time the teachers uh, began to be really unavailable and we didn't learn almost anything for that whole year and then the third, uh, third year came and they set us behind the computers and told us okay so now animate a one minute long movie and half of us didn't know what to do. Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> so pretty rough because, you know, and you cannot even, I don't know if you liked your first year because your first year then was normal. You went in school. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, COVID is just like fogged up so many things. So I don't know if the school wasn't great or on its own or it was just COVID. I would I would say a lot of things about that school because the system is really bad and it's a private school so you pay a lot of things and you end up not uh, getting the things that you were promised not learning the things that you were promised not working on things that you were promised you will be working on that is a very but, common problem yeah yeah but I wouldn't want to th them to sue me or something so I uh, want to go into details yeah and i also heard this because you know we live in different countries and i also heard this about you know my country's art school like i talked with so many people i also heard success stories of course but uh, i had i read about and i was told many many stories about basically the same thing like they went to an art school it was very promising it was even it even had a very good name and the year started, they enrolled, and it was, of course, a pain to learn school, so it wasn't free. And, uh, and basically, they just didn't do like 90 percentage of the st stuff they were promised to do. And they didn't really learn anything. So there is, there is someone I know who also went to an animation school, I think. And, uh, and it was like four years long, maybe. And mm -hmm. all those years, years, all they did was drawing, uh, you know, still life. And the maybe, oh, yeah. maybe after a model. And, and I was like, this was, and, and he is missing art fundamental things like perspective, values and such things. And I am like, who the hell you are missing that you went to an actual art high school? It was no, I have the same problem. Uh, like, I feel that um, when you go into art school and they accept you because they see your, your uh, beginner portfolio and they, they see how, like, they, they will see themselves like, okay, this looks fine. Um, I don't know if this is a uh, cause um, in your country too, but here what happens is they usually take everyone who applies. And so I was actually first, uh, I think. Mm -hmm. 
or in the top 10. Um, but they told me on the spot that uh, I am going to be accepted, as they told uh, a few other people. And, okay, so... Uh, so, okay, so, sorry, let me formulate my thoughts. I lost the train a little. We have to... Um, yeah, so uh, it is expected of you that you already know all these things and that you already have the fundamentals, uh, the perspective, the color theory, everything. But you actually don't. Many people uh, who go into art school, art high school, uh, I cannot speak on behalf of art universities because I didn't attend one. Um, but yeah, they are expecting you to already know these things, so they don't focus on that. And usually you have the still life classes, you have uh, the animation classes, you have the um, other computer classes such as um, the, the Photoshop uh, or Illustrator if you are a designer. I think, or, uh, you know, uh, Adobe After Effects, Adobe Premiere Pro, everything. Um, the Adobe Group, yeah. Yeah, the Adobe Group. <laughs> um, and then you have uh, Atelier Paintings, but they don't actually really teach you any of that. And so you either have to figure that on your own, or you already know that. Yeah. And I find this, uh, sorry. <laughs> go on, go on, finish. Uh, I, I find this um, really, I don't want to say harmful because, but it does um, make the learning process difficult because you spent all these years thinking you know how to draw because you got into the art school. And then you learn, you like the fundamentals, and you have to go back to the beginning. And that is not fun. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not so, The fundamentals are not fun, we can say that. Yeah. You know, it's just like, I, I knew, I also had this, this idea before, like, you go to an art school because you want to learn how to draw. Yes. So that they will teach you how to draw, but the reality they is they actually expect you to know how to draw and they can build on it. But this is what is missing. They are not building on it. They are just leaving holes in your knowledge because you went to an art high school at 14 years old. We, mm -hmm. I don't think we can expect a 14 years old kid to actually master the art fundamentals that is even difficult as an adult as well. And, exactly. And yeah, you know, an, an eight year old kid w before high school won't, won't sit down and, you know, m take a four hours long study drawing session on their own because they just want to understand why it was better. Yes. So kids usually draw for fun, which is perfectly fine, mm -hmm. but from a learning aspect, you cannot really, cannot really understand those drawing years at all because they are just having fun and love to draw, but that, is, that doesn't really have any teaching values. And, uh, you know, when you expect you go to an art high school, you expect, you know, they just make things straight for yourself, fill the holes in your knowledge. Because yes, maybe, maybe you can draw, I don't know, values because you see that color is darker than that another color. But this doesn't mean you are a mother. Understand it. Yeah. And, and you should, even the pros are still doing study drawings <laughs> because unfundamental it's not something you you can say that I, I am master of it and I am finished them you have to go back to them and refresh them and even though if you are doing art for more than 50 years now mm -hmm. yeah there's no such thing as art fundamentals forever for art anatomy <laughs> yeah you can, you can there is always something you can work on so yeah, yeah it's just like I, this is so harmful and and they let you go uh you know when you are finishing with a, with a, an art high school yeah you graduate and you think you you know how to draw but 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 you don't because nobody taught you yeah and this is also a big misconception i saw with many art students that they think 
going to an art school is enough. So they will draw in the school, and there are teachers who will look through their work and also have projects, of course. But besides that, you really have to draw a lot on your own. You have to practice a lot at home. Mm -hmm. And and as I saw it, because you know I never attended to an art school, but yes. but my art teacher, that six months long art teacher, actually told me that he was he went to an art school, of course, and then he went back home, and as a as a as a kid that he was like fourteen years old as well, uh, he sat down and kept drawing, you know, still life on his own because he wanted to draw, wanted to learn how to draw and he felt like the other school that could give to him wasn't enough and he had to work on its own. But even as an, as an adult, I don't really like to draw still life because it is boring as fuck. And, mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and I cannot even imagine you know, uh, any other 14 years old kid who just sits down and yeah, let's draw a mug because that is so fun. And yeah, if, if if teachers are not telling you, you should practice more and you should practice this and that and go home and work on it more so they don't give you such projects and homework custom made to your needs, then you, you won't know what to do as a kid. I think the system in uh, which the art schools work is greatly disappointing because you go in there and you look up to these people and you expect them to teach you things. But yeah, because you, you look up to these people and you expect them to teach you all these things you weren't as a kid able to learn your, yourself. And uh, what ends up happening is they, they, they don't. And my experience was that um, there is no such thing as individual there's no such thing as individual feedback or maybe it is in other schools but in the one that i went to the atmosphere that uh was inside this place was everyone was doing what they wanted the teachers were always uh, missing and nobody actually wanted to pay attention to you and if you asked something you was seen as a bother and uh, the teachers acted uh, annoyed and it was expected to, to understand everything on the first try and yeah and maybe that's also the case because a lot of uh, the teachers in our school were people who graduated from the university and they didn't know uh, but to go, what to do? So the first thing they did was to come here to teach. Yeah, yeah, that is also a career path because you know what? What do you do with an art diploma mm -hmm. <laughs> if you are not an already celebrated artist? Yeah. So I am not. I am totally not saying because we are start to to drift to the to the other negative end of, you know, every art school is shit. And it is not true. I am not saying every art school is shit, but I do think if, if I would come up with the idea, I will go to an art school. I would be, uh, <laughs> I would be a really tough spot because deciding, especially from the outside, which art school is great for you and which is not is really difficult. So who anyone can can decide which art school is okay, which art school is not scamming you, and especially if you are paying a lot of money for it. And uh, and if I have to make a decision to to decide what kind of art training I wanna spend my money on, but yeah, I would it would be so difficult to decide how to pick and which school. So maybe I I could you know read reviews about it and reach out to former students like ask them who they felt about the school was it useful yeah that is an important thing yeah. please uh, do this if you are trying to yeah as, uh, I'll read the reviews on google it will save you so much time <laughs> but also reach out because you know every art school loves to advertise their cor courses like 
oh yes, and this student is working for DreamWorks now, and that student is working for Disney, and you know, <laughs> this is like two students from I don't know a hundred or more, a thousand, and what what about the rest of them? Where are they working? Are they working you know, in the studio? That, that reminded me of something because our school, you know, what the biggest pride of our school is? Oh, what? That these are like free people are YouTubers. They don't have anything uh, common with art. They don't do art, but they are YouTubers. And <laughs> that's what our that, school was like. That's what they promote themselves. We have three YouTubers that, uh, and they are not even doing art. Yes. Jesus Christ. Okay, that wasn't the best school you could pick, sadly. <laughs> So yes, I, and I would definitely, even though, because you know, all the reviews can be edited or, you know, like whatever, it's just like they can clean bad reviews up. I would oh, definitely, definitely reach out for my students and ask them like, how do you feel? How is your art career? Does the school help you or not? Or you still do, love doing art altogether or you will progress or what was like what the school was like and is it worth it would you recommend so it's it's not a bother it just saves you possible bad decision like i hate this word decisions <laughs> <laughs> uh, and yeah. and yeah i it, i would definitely definitely do that because i am not saying every art school is shitty because it's not true it wouldn't be true but you can choose the bad one pretty easily and uh -huh. yeah, the pros for art school definitely if you pick a good one, you know, live feedback, mentors, you can ask questions, you save years of time, you know, learning at some yes. things. And also um, uh, they can help you with your uh, career. Most of these, these, these good schools, these better schools, not that the one that I went to, so let's ignore mine. Yes. But <laughs> the better schools um, will actually help you uh, to find your career after graduating. Yeah, um, connections. Yes, yes, and connections. And they will like not send you off somewhere, but uh, they can get you a spot. Yeah, and you know, there is also like this junior program when you go to, I don't know, a studio for junior mm -hmm. learning or, or working for them, but you know, usually these are free work, but you know, they are not paying you, but you can build your work on your networking. You can learn things that you wouldn't learn otherwise, you know, about mm -hmm. studio work, about the industry. And yeah, that is super, super useful. And as an outsider right now, I am, uh, it's just so freaking difficult to get into these circles because they are so tightly knitted and, and they just stick together and, and, you, and you cannot even find a hole to you poke your finger into it like hi i am here i am self-learning but i am making i thinking about going serious about it and hello there i just want to ask questions you cannot Mark, please don't put fingers in the holes oh my god <laughs> <laughs> you know okay you cannot put your feet in the door <laughs> they will slam at you Otherwise, if you are not coming from, you know, having a good art teacher who already has connections and recommend working places for them, even if you are a student or uh, partic participating in such projects and uh, these things, uh, yeah, this is why art school is pretty important, especially if someone want to ask in the want to work in the industry and uh, making illustrations or working. At an uh, animation studio or such things. You just have to get back some, get in somehow. And yeah, that's very difficult. But it is also very expensive, you know, on our school and like seriously expensive. Like I could go to the medical university from the same amount of money. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and uh, that would be, you know, like a, a better living, <laughs> but but uh, yeah, and it also it's easy to to pick the wrong school and then you waste your time. 
But I am not saying like self-learning is like the best way you can go, because let's say that self-learning is not easy and it is not for everyone. And you are also doing kind of both. So you had the school, but you are still doing art related school because you are learning art history, but you are not drawing. Uh, yeah. School. So you are I'm actually, I'm role. sorry. Yep. I just uh, put my little thing in. I'm actually considering to switch schools and actually continue to our university. I was thinking something like character design oh. and such because I have a friend and she's doing all these things and that seems really fun and I would love to do that. <laughs> yeah, that that can be fun, but just please pick a better school than your high school. <laughs> so yeah, definitely ask former students, you know, when you wanna switch universities, because if you go to another, you know, bad one, then you will be disappointed again. Oh. But actually, I am not saying like don't go on our school because yeah, I am fucking envy about you know saving time and progressing faster with you know mentors. Yeah, and also I need a portfolio, which is not fun to do. So God, portfolio building, yeah, that <laughs> is like ugh, it's disgusting thing, like. Why? You know, when, when you love to draw one one kind of thing and you realize, oh my god, but I should I should do, you know, like a background pieces as well and would they like my horses? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can can you imagine like feeling or portfolios all with the fantasy horses and yes, this is this is my I don't know, this is my fluffy giant chunky man eating horse that actually has a full lore behind it do you want to hear it <laughs> do you want to uh hear me yet about my osis yeah uh, OCs. mr from university <laughs> <laughs> yeah the portfolios can be so so i don't know i i have so many drawings but to be honest i wouldn't even put 90 percentage of them in my portfolio so let's let's just summarize the self-learning thing like pros and cons because you are you are also you know you are basically self-learning right now so what mm -hmm. do you think what is the pros and cons of self-learning the the pace is both a pro and con cons and is it a plural or <laughs> i think it's a plural <laughs> so so it's a pro and con and pros and cons <laughs> Yeah, I think so. No, okay. Positive parts and also the negative parts, yes, the, the yeah. pacing. Because basically you are allowed to take uh, as much time as you need to understand every aspect of the things that you're learning. But also the negative part about this uh, self-learning is the pace itself. Because... Um, it will seem like you're learning uh, very slowly, like you're not advancing at all for a lot of time. And that will be really demotivating and sometimes disappointing. But you are progressing, but you just cannot see it. Yeah. And there's nobody to tell you that you are progressing unless you go on the online and ask. <laughs> Yes, totally. And and that is a big problem because, you know, it was I, I started to draw like three and a half years ago and uh, others always tell me like, oh, my God, you are progressing so fast. But to me, it is still like I am like I, I just see all the amazing artists all around me online, which is a totally whole new topic. And we can totally talk about that another time, like social media, seriously. Oh. And and you know you just feel like but i am not drawing that that on on that advanced level yet and i am not progressing fast enough and and it is just very sad but it is also it, it's a bad feeling it's just depressive as fuck and mm -hmm. there is also this thing when in an art school if you go in your school and the teacher is going the teacher is saying you you will draw still life 
and this is the task and you sit down and start to draw, draw still lives but when you are on your own in the comfort of your own home and you know you should practice still life or you should practice i don't know perspective or something yes i should draw boxes in perspective because i have to understand perspective but who the hell loves to do that and you start to you know you start to just i will do that tomorrow i will do that tomorrow and eventually you don't do it yeah and and yeah that that is that is very very difficult with self-learning because there is no one behind you no one is forcing you and and yeah you have to force yourself which is pretty challenging yeah. it is uh, only about how strong your dedication is and how much you can uh, tell yourself to do these things because no one will pressure you into this only you and that's also the thing about uh, self-learning which is also uh, negative and positive at the same time because you don't have anyone behind your back to pressure you into things you don't want to do as uh, if you in comparison had to in art school doing tasks you don't really want to do and you find them boring but at the same time you don't have anyone behind your back to um <laughs> yeah to this task and you you won't do them because they aren't fun and so you have to be the person to pressure yourself into these things yeah and also judging your work is good enough or you are progressing or you're going in the right direction on your own is also very very difficult to decide if it is good enough or if you the, one of the biggest problems to me was with self-learning it's okay, I, I will practice, I don't know, this and this. For example, I will practice my values, but I never knew how long I have to practice my values, when it is enough, when I can move on on the next project or the next, you know, part of self-learning art. And not knowing when you are okay from your values or if it is okay if you understand the logic and you can you practice a bit but you are not a pro or you have to practice until you are a pro. And yeah, it mm -hmm. is so difficult. Yeah. And, and the uh, only thing you you know is that you don't know and you often feel like you don't know anything and then that you are a lost cause yes <laughs> yes that happens kind of a lot but we also have to uh, ha have to add that you know with art courses there are wonderful art courses out there like of course there are a lot of scams as well so this is why it is super important to check out the artists who are selling you art <laughs> yes <laughs> uh, to you know it's just like i am more easily buying art course from aaron blaze for example who worked for disney more than 20 years than someone from the internet who is promising me gaining access to anita anatomy forever so so always check your art schools check your art course teachers that is so important and you know Buying an art course is, is, yes, a cheaper option, and you can get amazing art courses, like a whole art school. It's like Mark, Mark Brunet has a whole art school, and it is a good thing. Uh, it's I, I bought it. Yes, it was pricey, but it wasn't as pricey as going to an actual art school, and <laughs> and it covers a lot, but uh, yeah, he... He worked for Riot, uh, I think, or Blizzard, no, Blizzard, he worked for Blizzard, and and his course, is, his art school is very, very human-based, and I am not human-based, so... You are not human. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, we have a misunderstanding of that, but that doesn't make the curse worse, I just, I just not really living the curse, but I am, I am very, very, uh, I really want to finish it one day, one day, <laughs> and... But you know, it's just like there is a great courses for cheaper prices, especially if you are waiting for you know big American holidays. Usually, these artists are Americans, and you you have great sales, and you also own the course, so you can you can go through it as many times as you want. So I I had art courses that I painted sections from them like four times in a row because I just 
really wanted to, it to sink in and I freely could paint it four times in a row like no art teacher you know looked at me in a bad way because why you are still not understanding it because I could just peacefully go through the curse as I wanted to so mm -hmm. yeah it's definitely cheaper it's definitely calmer but it is definitely slower so I think everyone um, is allowed to make a curse if they are powers for make a course if they feel uh, they are able to provide help for the people they want to teach. But personally, I wouldn't buy a course for a course from a person uh, whose portfolio and CV I cannot find anywhere. Yeah. Yeah, totally understand and I totally agree. Personally, to me, it is always like I am not buying anything from someone who actually has less skills than I am. And it doesn't matter how, uh, I don't know, infamous they are on social media or something like that. That doesn't mean anything. If I feel like their knowledge is not more than what I currently have, then I am not buying their stuff. Mm -hmm. that's, that's valid, because um, what can they learn you if you already are uh, they're, past they're that done. point? Yeah. yeah, it's just like, no, because they, and I am not saying they are bad person or something like that. They, they can be nice, they can be sweet, they can, as you say, they also want really, probably want to teach things to people, but yeah not my not my piece of cake mm -hmm. and yeah this is this is and and one more thing you can always buy art courses that actually has a mentorship version of it mm -hmm. so you really have a one-to-one -one connection to the artist so i could buy for example mark brunet's art school with an actual mentorship where he himself sits down looks through all my homework because his art school program gives you homework oh my God. how much does that cost <laughs> it's it's expensive i think it's it's over oh. 1k uh, oh wow i'm not paying 1k to talk to a person you know if if there is an artist who has such, you know, a grand CV, like big studio names, and I also see their artworks and they are pretty amazing. And <laughs> uh, they are also a very wholesome person. I happily pay for their mental program because, because that is just basically priceless. They can give you out so such opinions, uh, you know, advice as uh, such things that is basically priceless and it is still cheaper than an art school but I am yeah. at the moment not at the spot that I, I can afford myself to buy such mentorship program but I fucking will I will totally will buy Adam Duff's art mentorship program one day I hope for this yeah, one day because because I, I love him. I love his mentality. I love the way he's doing. I love the way he's talking to us through his YouTube videos. So I am a plus one, Adam. I will go someday. And yeah, you got me. And I, <laughs> if, if you can, if you can afford it anytime at the point, I totally think if you, you know, check out the artist who you want to join to uh, for a mentorship program that yes, I would totally recommend to do it. Oh, so it works like um, you can only uh, watch one course once or like something like that? To be honest, with the mentorship program, I would record it and watch it back every time <laughs> I want it. So yeah, I think you, you, you are allowed to record it for yourself, of course, because it would be useful only mm -hmm. for yourself because it is custom made for your needs, for your Ooh. problems. Mm -hmm. And and yeah, I totally would rec record my mentorship meetings like for myself to watch, watch back because even though if I just like feeling bad and slightly depressed about my art, it, it can be such, you know, yes. it can lift you up when Definitely. Yeah, but what did my mentor say? Am, am I totally a hopeless case? <laughs> and no, I, he didn't say that. Okay, I am not 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 a total. And then you turned on and actually realized that yes, he did say that. Oh my God, yes. Maybe he praised my work. Oh no, he didn't. <laughs> <laughs>
No, they are sweet. You know, everyone thinks about art journey and self-learning art or just learning art. It is like living a dream. <laughs> like you are in the, at this magical place where rainbows and unicorns are all around you and you jump out of bed every morning full of creativity and you don't have to work a day if you are doing something that you love. This is the biggest bullshit ever. Like I thought when I started to draw, I, I thought like how hard it can be because, you know, I didn't really have also a big grand reasoning to to start to learn art as, as you didn't really have any grand reasoning why you went to an animation school. <laughs> Basically, I was just, I was uh, depressed. I wanted to leave my job behind. Uh, I worked in the... TV broadcast industry, it was very stressful. I hated it. I didn't hate the job, I hated the people in it. <laughs> and, yeah. And, uh, and I just wanted to do something totally different. I didn't want to do anything with any kind of media uh, anymore. Wanted to leave that behind me. And that was the point when I was like, hmm, art seems like fun. Hmm. Art is creativity. Let's learn how to draw. And that was basically my reasoning why I started to learn drawing. And actually I thought it is seriously how hard it can be, like drawing things. It cannot be that hard. Oh, yes. Well, uh, actually, I started uh, drawing uh, when I was a child. And um, I don't know how I came to this. I just... Uh, naturally had this um, desire to put uh, things on paper because I was always this creative child and uh, I was I, back then I was praised for it I was gifted child uh, but eventually um, I, I grew up to be a below average adult <laughs> it's so interesting that you are saying that because I was the totally different kid like my childhood drawings, all of them, without exception, were horrible, like so horrible. Like, you know, how, how well a kid can draw in kindergarten, it's horrible. But you know, there are oh, always- I mean, Sorry, sorry. What? Did... I have a story to kindergarten and art. I just quickly wrap this up and then yeah, yeah. give you the word. Uh, so every kid, like, you know, they are not Da Vinci's at all, but some kids are drawing better than others. And I was the other. <laughs> <laughs> I, was the, I, I was the some kids. Yeah, I was the, you were the some kids and I was the other. And, and uh, all my, all my drawings were so horrible. I myself gave up on drawing during kindergarten. So yeah. No. yeah, I totally, I gave a drawing very early and, uh, and yeah, I wasn't praised. I wasn't gifted. I, I was horrible, like truly horrible, even with kindergarten quality or something like that. And that was, oh my like, God. that was it. And I didn't draw until later in my life. Like I was 30 years old when I started to draw again. So what is your kindergarten story? Um, I, I, I'm, it's, it's full, full of, uh, it's, it's gonna sound kind of selfish, but I was, uh, back then, I really thought I'm the best, I was the some kids, as I said, I thought I'm the best artist in the world because I was first person in the class to figure out to have a neck. They didn't have just legs and head. I draw a neck to the people and I was praised for my discovery <laughs> and I thought I am the best no, person this ever. Is sweet. I mean, to be honest, I, I often think kindergarten kids do it right, seriously. Like, as an adult, what you are thinking about your own art? Oh my God, everything is so much better than me. Did you see that Russian artists? Oh my God, they are amazing and they are self-learning and they are way better than me. Like, seriously, we are so depressed about our own art. When you are really looking around and uh, seeing that everyone seems to be better than you. And this- It's because they are. <laughs> But but they are not. But, but when you are looking at your own art piece, then you you cannot see it clearly because you did that shit. <laughs> and from the start to the end, you are with the art piece on the road, and and 
you also know how you wanted it to look like. And usually it is not looking like how you wanted it to look like. <laughs> and, and you are just hating it and, and you are thinking that, but others are doing so much better and you love that style and you love that, that brush strokes that other artists are doing and yours not looking like that because you are not them you cannot draw like them even if you really try to and and it's just like a disappointment and you can find yourself at a very very dark place and to me that was the time especially at the beginning of learning when this this fucking toxic self-talk talking happened and I literally told myself about myself and skills that I am super shitty and I will never make it and uh, I will never learn how to draw. And I, basically I, there was times when I smashed my sketchbook against the walls, I ripped out pages of my sketchbook, uh, threw, into, threw pieces into the garbage and such things. And oh no. yeah, and it was pretty bad. I cried a lot as well and was super oh. depressed. So, I'm sorry. So yeah, this this is a thing, and uh, and when you are you know in a community in an art school, even though art school can be very competitive, because you know oh, yeah. everyone is artists around yourself, and they are just wanna and everyone wanna be the best one, <laughs> which is kind of healthy because of course you are doing art because you wanna be better at it, but there is also a pro in art communities when you know when they are not toxic <laughs> you are meeting with like like-minded people and you can inspire each other and i think oh. no one better understands these struggles you go through than another artist mm -hmm. because no other artist will think you are living the dream with art because you are not yeah. working because you are doing what you want to do uh, i actually remember what i wanted to say earlier yeah. About the art school and self-taught um, topic. And I have, this is what I personally noticed um, when I was in art school and how people approached me. And it's some, some groups of people. Uh, there's this mentality that um, praises self-taught artists. Uh, for being able to learn drawing uh, and the art on their own. Uh, but at the same time, it throws, uh, it, it, it uh, smears dirt over the uh, artists that went to art school because a lot of them uh, paint this mindset that um, Oh, this person went to art school, so they had someone help them learn. We did this all work by ourselves, so that means we are better than this person. And it's very disappointing in the arts community where, um, personally, I think we should help each other, we should praise each other, we should love each other in a romantic sense. <laughs> yeah, I totally understand this because I am an artist, you are an artist, or they are an artist, and we all are going through the same journey, just, you know, everyone living it a bit differently, everyone has their own steps to climb on, but basically the journey is the same. It's full of struggling, it's full of mm -hmm. practicing, and art is really a skill that has a never-ending learning process, and so there is n never a point when you can say that I learned how to draw. I cannot be better because you can always be better. There is always you can s there is always something you can work on, and and yeah, and it is difficult on its own already. And when when these little toxic competition starts, like mm, you went to an art school, mm, I see you got you got help, but I did everything on my own and I am better than you, but what the fuck? But Why? You, yeah, you can go to an art school too and it is like not, not something that comes from the devil itself. I just don't understand this, this negativity that comes, that can come from the artist community. Like making differences between who is self-learning, who went to art school, who draws, who drew something first, like, 
I mean, you cannot really draw anything new, like mind-blowing new by now, because humans do art since the dawn of the time, and yeah, basically we draw everything in every possible way, so you cannot really do something super new. Oh yes, and other thing about art community, when, when uh, you don't really want to mm-hmm. pay for a mentorship program, but you have a good art community, you can always ask fellow artists, you know, like showing your pieces to them, ask for a red line, ask for a critique, these things, because as self-learning, you don't have it as a school student has it, because, you know, art teachers are there to critique your work, you want it or not, this is their job. And uh, when you are on your own, uh, you have to critique yourself, but this is kind of not always possible or not not really mirroring the rea- reality because you just always go soft on yourself, I think. You drew the piece. Of course you want to go soft on yourself because that is your kid. But other artists can discover things on your piece that you probably wouldn't see on your own. So yeah, this is being part of an art community that is a smart thing because you can always ask for feedback, you can ask for help, you can ask for resources, and you, as a self-learner, you should be part of an art community because this is how you can take out the most of your learning journey and not just, Mm -hmm. you know, sit between the four walls in the dark and just draw, draw, draw. Many people think that learning art is about how much you are drawing but it's not it's about who you are drawing and uh, someone can progress with less drawing goals than someone who is draws like you know 10,000 hours but they are not really reflecting back on their drawings their methods their learning and uh, but they just think if they do that thing more that they do do driving more they will magically progress but they won't yeah so how do you feel about being part of an art community because you are um how i feel hmm uh awesome <laughs> there are uh obviously uh every now and then you going to encounter uh some uh, negative uh people and negative situations but overall the i I like how uh, supportive the art community can be and um that's the reason why i haven't stopped uh i think that's uh um that's kind of uh, my motivation to continue and to get better because i'm sure if uh i was only facing with the negative people in the art community, I would not be doing art right now. Yeah, that's so true. That's so true. Maybe because mm. art is, is difficult. So yeah, if anyone wanna learn art in school or self-learning, be prepared that it is not like a fairy tale. It is a skill. You have to learn it. It takes a lot of time just like any other skill does like learning a new language is just as difficult so yeah being a creative skill doesn't mean it is easier to learn you have to put put the work on it you have to put the time on it you will fail a lot of time that is totally normal and uh, and yeah just you can go to an art school if you want to you can do self-learning they have pros and cons I hope, and I think we both hope, uh, we were able to, I don't know, show direction, like how you choose your art school or something like that, and bring light to the hard parts of learning art in school and or alone. And yeah, it is a great journey, a very rewarding journey, but difficult, yes, it's difficult. (laughs) But the results, uh, maybe not results, because um, what exactly are results? Um, art is a never-ending learning journey, but let's say the results are worth it. Yeah, because yes. you make 
something out of nothing. That, that was basically one of my biggest motivation. This is why I always wanted to learn something that I can create something like it wasn't strictly art. Like I could, you know, learn sewing as well. I was thinking about it. I am just deadly afraid of the sewing machine, but <laughs> I have one, but I haven't used it for like three years because um, I don't know why. <laughs> yeah, but it is also just like, but the ability to think about something and then you can actually make it and, you know, put something on an empty canvas and fill it with colors and tell your story through a picture, that is basically the reward of all the suffering and depression <laughs> and everything that that comes with art. And of course you meet all the great art friends because today you have internet, you have, you can have international art friends and it is also gives you extra, it's like, you know, you are talking a language that you actually learned and it is not your native and you practice the language and you won't forget the language as well either. So yeah, it is like a double win. You learn to art and you, you know, brush off your English and these things. So, okay. I think, I think we kind of finished here and also wanted to ask quickly, we will make a commission video as well. Like not, not like someone asked us to do a video and that's a commission. We are talking about <laughs> commissions of art because we are both making commissions. And when we ask the community, what kind of answers, uh, what kind of questions they would ask from an artist, uh, everyone was so interested in commissions, like basically all the questions were about commissions. So we will answer the commission questions as well in the next video. Oh, yes.